Jack Stuss Homestuck is a self-indulgent podcast featuring a heart player encouraging you to be self-indulgent too. Welcome home. Hey guys, a few quick notes here. Um, so for one, the episode art for this week was done by DJ, not Abby. And uh, last week I forgot to say, or Wednesday I forgot to say that the art was done by Callum Traveler, not Abby. Um, I really love having people on that want to make their own artwork because then I can show it off to you and you can go and look at their other artwork and commission them and all that other fun stuff. Uh, for two, at the end of this episode, I said this is being done during my uh hiatus and that is not true so um my hiatus doesn't start until the end of october i just got my dates mixed up i think my schedule got mixed around here towards the end so we have another episode coming out wednesday i'm editing that right now so for patrons that should be up um tomorrow which is sunday monday at the very latest um if not actually today depending on how productive i get so uh, thank you guys for for listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Jack Says Homestuck. Uh, we're doing a problematic fave episode, and uh, this time we're going to be doing two characters in one with the general theme of the assholes you know. And uh, joining me today is DJ. DJ, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Hello. Um... I'm DJ, um, Twitter user, the real DJ Pocky. You might know me from um, Just Say They at Sakon. Um, wow, that was the last time I was officially on mic. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are your, your pronouns? I forgot to ask that. Um, I use um, they, them mostly, but any kind of pronoun works. Legit. Okay, so today we are talking about Zebedee and Zebra, the good Zs of Friendsim. Well, they're not exactly good, but we're going to talk about that. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I feel like any character we talk about here, we give the benefit of the doubt, and we, we're allowed to call them good on these episodes. So, they're the good Z's. reasonable. Good Z. <laughs> the good Z's. Uh, yeah, so so first of all, what what drew you to these characters? Why Why are you here talking about this? Well, I can tell you, like, exactly why I like Zabidi, but Zebra is, like, how did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because um, Zabidi reminds me a lot of myself um, in my early days of fandom. And if anyone knew me around the ages of um, 11, 12, 13, I was uh, really fucking obnoxious and I had no friends and I tried really hard to have friends. And that, that just wasn't flying, you know? Yeah. So I, I see a lot of him and myself, um, and I see, like, in what ways, like, in my he could improve in the future, but until then, he's just going to be, like, 13-year-old me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Um, and, and, yeah, so, so Zebra just, uh, or Zebra, or, you know, I just say whatever. Um, he just kind of happened? He just kind of happened, like, um... Partially because of um, Mickey, Mickey on Twitter, um, amazing artist. Um, all of a sudden, um, I was like super invested in like the way they would draw zebra, and all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh shit! Oh no! <laughs> oh no!" Yeah, I mean, that's how it happens. That's how Cronus got us, or that's how Crow got us with Cronus. I just called Crow Cronus. So. I mean. They have to live with that now. <laughs> so uh yeah no that's how that's how people get me with their fanfics and everything that's why we're having this because people are so good about making us like these characters um yeah, yeah. and it's like they're strangely magnetic you know it's like 
you know that they're terrible people, but it's the way that the author depicts them terrible. It just draws you in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so what's really interesting about these two characters and the reason that we're, we're calling this the assholes, you know, um, actually you had a better name for it, I think, but I forgot what it was. Um, but it, because you described it as the umbrage effect where like in Harry Potter, you have Voldemort, the big evil bad guy who murders everyone. And big, then you have, scary, like, yeah. Yeah. And then you have umbrage who is a teacher who's very shitty and abusive but, like, also doesn't kill anyone. And people hate Umbridge a lot more than they hate the literal genocidal maniac. And, and that's because... Yeah. Like, that's because we know Umbridge is in our life. We like, have to deal with Voldemort other than, like, that guy who's in the, uh, the office right now. But uh, we're not going <laughs> to talk about him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But Umbridge, like, we've all had a really shitty teacher or, like, a really shitty older adult in our lives who just pat on the head and says, don't worry, honey, you're just stupid. It's all right. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. That, that honestly sounds like Bepharis in general, but eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how Bepharis works in their government. It's like, oh, it's okay, honey. Yes. Oh, no. Uh that means that means the fairy in her rule is like just straight up umbrage. Yeah, oh, but she's like a well-intentioned umbrage, which is weird. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we yeah, have that with Zebra and Zebedee, where there is, I mean, everyone like agrees on hating Zebra, but uh, Zebedee is a lot more controversial in um like hating and loving him. Um, but it's, it's interesting because, so Zebedee and Zebra don't kill anyone, unlike a lot of Homestuck characters. Um, oh. and then we, but we have and Zebra. It's interesting. Hmm? it's interesting to think about, like, this is a series full of people who kill people without even thinking about it. But yeah, yeah let's harp on the little guy who writes RPS. Yeah, like, we have a little guy who's, who writes RPF and is just a little... Socially unaware. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Uh, and then we have Zebra, who we all agree is a giant asshole, but still never kills anyone. Um, and, and, and yeah, it's, it's because, like, we deal with these people IRL. I legitimately um, met a guy at a bar once. Um, I was just chilling. It was 90s night. I was in my element. And this guy, like, hey, how you doing, baby? Why do you look so alone? And I'm like, holy shit, it's Zebra. <laughs> <laughs> legitimately, like, he came up to me so. It's just like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, ah! Wow. But, like, I didn't let it show. I, like, walked away all cool. But I was like, Oh no, those people are real. Yeah, they're unfortunately very real. Um, yeah, and and like I myself have sort of dated someone who was like a real like outward feminist ally, all that shit, and was actually kind of shitty. Like they're out there, um, but. Uh, but yeah, so they get a lot more hate than other characters. And there are some characters on the problematic faves who have legitimately murdered people that people are like, but they don't belong here, though, maybe? Not next to Zebra. So so we have these. And um, and yeah, but but like you said with Zebedee, uh, we, a lot of us um, see ourselves partially in Zebedee. I, I can't say me for sure because I never fucking interacted with anyone ever. Uh, when I we was were all at one point just obnoxious little weeaboos who didn't know how to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, and um, and through that insecurity, <laughs> it just manifests into it's okay if you don't like me. I know you don't. Oh uh, yeah, like it's a shitty coping mechanism, but it's a coping mechanism. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so bad. 
like i love somebody but even hearing you say that just brings up people and i'm like oh yeah those yeah, are people he- i don't talk to anymore <laughs> yeah. um but yeah but we gotta have some uh i mean we don't gotta but we, we have some sympathy for characters like zebedee because it's hard and like if no one like helps them out with shit then that's just how it be yeah, like, this this guy has nobody who, like, speaks his language around him because he just has his Lucis. So he's just alone on GrubTube all day long listening to Sarava talk. And, like, that's a common experience with, like, a lot of young kids who don't have friends. They form these parasocial relationships, and sometimes those parasocial relationships go a little too far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we, we see that problem even in our community of, of Homestuck. Like, there's been issues with that. And it, it's something that we just need to be aware of and understanding of and also be like, hey, no, back off, maybe. Here's back off. It's fine. Back off. Um, yeah, because, like, people, these are real people. People have lives. Um and random fans don't have the right to just, like, show up on somebody's doorstep like, hi, love your work, because that's how you get the police called on you. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do have like, this internet culture nowadays that's like, your favorite creators are literally on the other side of that screen, readily available whenever you want. And that makes it the divide a lot harder to make. Absolutely. It's definitely something that we're we're still figuring out as an internet community of how to handle it and like let people know what boundaries are. Um and uh and then we have Zebra, who I hope most of you can't super relate to him, but I understand if like in the past you can because everyone has shitty things in their past. Um I don't think anyone who actually is zebra can relate to zebra because they would never think themselves as zebra. Um, mm, yeah. They wouldn't they wouldn't connect with zebra because they don't see themselves as zebra because if they did they wouldn't be a zebra. Yeah, you're right. Um so so yeah, if you were a zebra in the past, I'm glad you recognized that and mo- moved on and um but it is still, like, yes, Zebra does a lot of shitty things. He has, like, low blood slaves, which is kind of on par with just Alternia, but not good. Um, and he's, like, a shitty, creepy, pressuring douchebag. But again, he hasn't murdered people. Um, but he's just so recognizable in our everyday lives that we fucking hate him. But then we love him because Mickey makes good art. Yeah. Basically. Um, absolutely. And and then it's fun to think of like shipping him with people. Like, um I, I believe you made some uh zebra and our data shipping art, which is fucking hilarious. Oh my god, just like Doom begets Doom and like I don't know, there's something about zebra ships. I keep and it's not a good idea. But um, there's just something about, like, pairing Zebra with people who can, like, pull him down a notch and say, look, what do you think you're doing you're in charge? And Ardana is the perfect person for that. Absolutely. And Ardana is a person who is literally torturing and murdering lowbloods, but we fucking love her. She is not on the problematic faves list. There is no uh, big... There's um, no question that our data runs a red room for views. Yeah, like... Yeah, we just we just love her, and there's no, like, big controversy around her, so she doesn't get on the list. And again, <laughs> the thing is, is that well, she even pretends to be doing it for, like, the good and, like, actually caring about MSP. It, it just... Like, oh, I don't... I, I don't. I never asked to be like a cerulean. Yeah, and the I, are like, 
painting and like being a lesbian <laughs> like and coding like and this is not who assigned you risk akin ardata like i feel so bad for you yeah um and that's that's just how it is and again we it, it's just funny how much we love ardata and we hate zebra and that that's just like this isn't me being like i can't believe you love zebra and and or, or <laughs> hate zebra and love ardata like that's not what i'm saying i get it um but it's just um y you just got to stop and think about it because yes there are objectively worse crimes than being a douchebag but we hate the douchebag a lot more they go dou douchebags and um i hope you don't know any murderers <laughs> yeah <laughs> if Hopefully. you do I'm please sorry um <laughs> sorry <but> about like, you <laughs> your experiences are not universal <laughs> yeah absolutely um yeah most of us will never have to deal with like literal murderers next door who just do it because society and if you tells do, them it's okay i would move yeah please move um what about you yeah. uh please don't get killed <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i have this this list of like the cerulean girls from friend sim in regards to like what facet of risk they are like yeah. this is a side note but um, I always say Ardata is like Riska is a product of society, and Ramele is Riska is a bitch and she loves it, and Elward is just Vasca lesbian. Yeah, which that's debatable, but I get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, it's like that's why they're all like Riska adjacent, not only because they're Cerulean, but because like reflect different facets. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, Zebra and Zabidi. Yes. Shit, I was going to talk about uh, something regarding Zebra, and I don't remember. Oh, the groupie thing. That's something that they also have in common. They're technically both groupies. Yes. It's just one has a lot more power in groupie situations than another. One has a lot more societal power, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, like, when one makes uh, someone feel creepy about it, that person just blocks and, like, vagues about it. And when the on. other makes someone feels creepy about it, they literally he, have nothing they can do. the club. Yeah. He buys the club and he's like, oh, congratulations, Shixie, now you have a permit. Yeah. And that's another big thing, like, their positions them, um, I wouldn't say one is, like, more horrifying than the other. But also, like, you don't have to worry about, like, tiny little Zabidi, like, bomb. so Sarava has a place to mix. Yeah. Like, again, Zabidi, you can just block and move on, and that's, like, then you have to just live with knowing that there's RPF fiction about you. I just said fiction twice. Um, but... <laughs> real person fiction fiction. Yeah, real person fiction fiction. Um, about you out there and like that sucks but at least they don't literally own the only place you can be seen and make money yeah it's just like zebra's position in society he could just do that like he yeah. can have whatever he wants and that <laughs> single-handedly like makes it a no shit as to why like he's like universally recognized as Oh, you better run away. Yeah. Um, it, it does make me wonder what other um, people of his cast think of him. Like, because he's this weird fucking ally person, I guess, but like he's not actually doing anything. So I, I just imagine that he's as um, kind of cut off from those of his cast as he is of everyone else because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, I like to imagine that. He, like, chides people for being, like, castist. Yeah. Like, um, I, I specifically remember Amicia saying, like, disgusting mutant or whatever, and I know, like, he would definitely get on her little ass about that. Like, hey, you know those people are, like, rejected in society, right? But then he doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, which really makes me want to see a conversation between him and Cancri. Which, oh, God! 
could never happen in canon, but oh, it's get back in. It's so good. Um, I really want him and Cancri to talk, and I want nothing more than that. Um, Zebra is just high blood Cancri. It's okay. Yeah, and I wonder if that would make. See, I have high hopes for Cancri. I'm so sorry, Zebra fan listeners, because I'm really bad at this. This is one that I, I I've been struggling to say nice things about Zebra, and I just can't because the narrative doesn't. I mean, <laughs> granted, granted, like sometimes when I replay Zebra's route. Like, I'll actually listen to what he says, and sometimes I think to myself, what if he does want to do something, but he knows that if he did, like, he would probably get killed for it. Yeah. Which and that, does value his life a lot more than anything else. And, like, that's a big self-preservation thing, but also, like, it's a possibility. Like, he might not just be an asshole, but, like, we're inclined to be, like, all right, you're an asshole. Walking away now. Yeah. Yeah, we don't try to delve deep into his motivations because, like, we've seen people like him and we think we know the motivations. And we might. There might be no deeper side to Zebra. He might just be there to be that person. But maybe he does. And we give the benefit of a doubt to literally everyone else. But again, in most routes, we get, like, some way to sympathize with them like with our daughter's like little breakdown about not choosing to be a cerulean and like other stuff and with zebra it's just like no he's just like this just he's just like this um he's just like this and he's like oh you'll you'll be an ally to yourself right and you're like i guess yeah um but but yeah like so he is like the one homestuck character who doesn't get to be three dimensional. At least not yet, because we haven't like seen him in Hive Swap yet. That's true. We haven't seen him in Hive Swap, so maybe he will be three dimensional, or 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 not, or maybe he'll just be like, no, this is just this. He's just bleh. <laughs> yeah. But um, overall, like he's an enjoyable character, regardless if he's like shitty. Yeah. Just because like, he's not just shitty, he's really goofy at being shitty. Absolutely. It's so over the top and so funny. And I really enjoyed his route. Like, I know that some people have a hard time playing it because, like, again, real life experiences, but it's so funny. Like, when he's when he's walking you across the street um, during, like, Flushed Affirmation Day, right? And he sees, like, the the one, like, troll giving another one a piggyback ride against his will, and he's like, oh dear, you, sh- you shouldn't be looking at that, that's PDA, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, God damn, you are overcompensating hard. Yeah. It's, it's so good. And you're the one getting up in my face asking what blood color I am so you can fetishize me. Yes. Gucci. It's so funny. And it's like, so funny. That's another thing, like, I've, I haven't actually had conversations within the fandom about this, because I'm not super, like, active in the fandom right now, but it's a question also, like, if Zebra's, like, an actually a good person, or if he's just, like, fetishizing low bloods. Yeah, um, yeah, that goes back to us not giving him the benefit of the doubt like we would, like we do for other characters of we just assume that it's fetishizing low blood, there's nothing else. And again, people like that do exist. So that might be all there is. Um, yeah. But God forbid you try to give him any more depth in the fandom. Uh, They're products of society. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't fucking know how to do anything. He's not trying to learn, but, uh, you know, he, he doesn't know. No one, like, no one's out here teaching how to be a low blood ally, because what the fuck is that? Yeah, and no one's teaching Zabidi how to, like, be a decent person and, like, not be a creeper, because nobody wants to talk to him in the first place. Yeah. Um, and that's just... How it is. And this isn't saying that you have to go and teach things 
to your zebras and zabidis in your life because that takes a lot of emotional commitment that not everyone is prepared for and may not work in the end. But I mean, this is a problematic faves episode, so it's time to grab some compassion and throw it at characters you may not like. And yes, we are asking you to be momentarily compassionate of Zebra to think about it from live in a society perspective. Because as much as I don't like to think about him as a, a deeper person, I keep thinking about him as a deeper person, and I'm like, God damn, this come from? Why am I crying? Yeah. Uh, any final uh, Zebra or Zabidi thoughts? Um, these are my boys, uh, but I still love them. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So where can people find you? I know you are not on Twitter right now. You want to plug that anyway for the day you may one day come back? Yesterday, I found myself lurking on Twitter, like, a little bit. Um, so, like, if you message me, I'll probably find it. Um, but I'm at the real DJ Pocky basically everywhere. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be links to um that below again sorry if you're on spotify because spotify hates links but um but yeah thank you so much for joining me dj and uh and giving me your z-boy thoughts yay and i will see you guys um actually this will be during my semi-hiatus from the podcast i'm not quite sure how that's going to work out yet so i'll see you one day this podcast's theme is Dirty Dirt Kenny and was created by Domi, who could be found on SoundCloud as Domino Thief. The art for the podcast was done by Abby, who you can find on Twitter at Space Arby's. Unless it wasn't. Shout out to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. To become a patron and get episodes up to five days early, along with other benefits, go to patreon.com slash socially anxious dragon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You can find links to that and more in the episode's description, on the podcast's Twitter, JaxDoesHS, or on JaxDoesHomestuck.com. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to be a little selfish.